And I remember back in the day, you were one of the first guys to uh, really embrace follicular unit transplantation with the use of uh, uh, microscopic dissection. And then when things started to evolve, you embraced the lateral slit technique. And you were always kind of a guy who wanted to stay on the cutting edge. Um, a few months ago, it's been a while actually since we spoke about this, but you had contacted me and, you know, you said that you were doing some research and you really kind of had your eye on the artist robot and you wanted to know what my opinion was. And I told you that my opinion is that I really believe that either the artist or technology like it is the future of this field. And you took a closer look and you ended up getting an artist for your practice. And since we spoke about it, since we last spoke, you said that um, you think it's a game changer. Why don't you tell me about that? Well, I, I basically felt like I was learning hair transplantation all over again. Uh, the things that's so much different is the fact that the entire donor area really runs from temple all the way back around your head to the other side. And I try to calculate that area before we even start because to, for the best FUE procedure, you try to distribute the donors as much as you can over the entire area, right. not just take it from one, one spot. Right. And the robot enables us to do that. We set our spacings, for example, maybe three millimeters or four millimeters apart, and then we know and we calculate how many grass you should get from that area. And, it, and I like that a lot. Because, uh, you know, in five days, you can't tell they've had a hair transplant. That's amazing. Yeah, but what what's, I think is impressive about what, you, what you're doing is that, you know, you, you just said it. You've been doing this for 35 years. You know, a lot of the guys who are, you know, kind of the old guard, the guys who have been involved uh, for those many years, they are resistant to change. Uh, and you already have the infrastructure of your, of your practice all set up. To add this into your practice, to incorporate this, you had to make a lot of changes. So you must really believe in the technology. Well, the first time I saw the technology, I couldn't believe how perfect the graphs were. And I, I just was really moved by it so much that I really, I, within two weeks, I went up to San Jose to visit the place where this was created and met the software engineers and the mechanical engineer. I said, you guys don't realize what you've created. And they looked at me like I was, you know, what is this old guy talking about? <laughs> well, I when I saw the thing perform, Spencer, it was literally counting hairs. Yeah. So if you think about it, it wouldn't take much to count every hair on the scalp, and you could map it all out. And now we're getting more scientific. And knowing how many hairs there is, uh, how many hairs you want to place in a certain area. And, and I think, you know, in the end, you're going to produce a better result. Well, listen, you know, and, and I think everyone in the field knows that I was really resistant to it initially. Uh, restoration Robotics has been, you know, they've been around for a while. And Jim Harris and Bob Bernstein and uh, back in the day, Sarah Wasserbauer, you know, they came to me to talk about the artist. I actually did the first uh, live artist uh, hair restoration through the ball truth with Jim Harris. But even then, and that was in 2011, I still didn't think it was ready for prime time. I thought there were a lot of glitches. There were a lot of issues. I thought that the punchers were too big. They were having some, you know, technical issues that I just didn't think, um, at least at the time, I didn't feel good about sending patients in the direction to have robotic hair transplant surgery. But as, you know, the devices evolved. And as the engineers, you know, these, this company really kept their ears open and they were really open to suggestions. And they took them all. They took them from me. They took them from the guys and, you know, the, the, the actual surgeons in the field. And, um, you know, a few months ago, I was like, you know what, this, this is it now. This is, this is ready. It is doing, I believe it can do uh, the heavy lifting of an FUE procedure in a way that was never, you know, can never be accomplished. Did you know that uh, a lot of people don't realize this? There's actually two needles with the with the device. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, explain, that's, that's a, it was a guys. brilliant idea. It really yeah. was because the first needle is a cutting needle, basically breaking the epidermis, making the opening for the coring needle then to pass through. Yeah. So you, you know, when they talk about the needle size and all that stuff, really, it's the the puncture needle is only a 19 gauge, and it just goes into the epidermis. 
uh, it's a sharp, but the other one, the corn needle, you know, it's a doll punch. And that came from James Harris. So I think it was a brilliant idea. Well, let me yeah. ask you a question. A lot you, I've had three upgrades since I've owned this machine. And you've only, owned, only, you've only had it for what, about six months now? Yeah, we yeah. got it in July. Yeah. Uh, the support's unbelievable. I, I just can't get over it. Well, that, that's how fast the technology is evolving.